Welcome to MacroCode. If you are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Happy New Year to our members. So today we are going to continue with our series on a blazer. So as you can see on our screen, we created a video previously on students management. So we are going to continue with this video. So previously we created a video on how to add a student. So we were able to add some data to our application. So I'll just do something here then I put in some uh, details so we'll be doing some validations so if we click save you can see we are able to add this data to our application then we were able to update some details as well uh, update test then we can add some data we can change this to test then we can add some information so we were able to update as you can see these are the data that we just updated and we can also delete so you can see the data here and we can delete so this was a simple crude blazer app on students management so today we are going to proceed we want to enhance our application so that it looks better and also it has some information about uh, to represent a real scenario on students management application so if you add a new student you can see we have student count but what we want to prevent is uh, when you enter the first name middle name email address and you also enter the phone number what you want to al to do is for the countries we want to have a drop down list for the countries and we are going to enhance this so that we also have our student departments uh, courses that they are enrolling and how to enroll student courses and also capture some of the information that are missing within this application so we are going to create a model so i want us to go to our source code so if you're new to this channel and you find this video uh, interesting we have uh, the source code down below in our description you can access it and uh, follow what we are doing so as you can see on our project just to uh, quickly give uh, you a recap we have our students management uh, then we have the client so this is the so we have the student management we have the client then we also have a shared uh, class library where we are storing our models for the students clan we are storing our pages so you can see under pages then we have students we have the students list as a page that gives us the list of all the students the edit uh, section that you are able to edit uh, students details the delete uh, page gives us the information of the student that you are going to delete and the add new student so this is a form that allows us to capture and submit the student details so for those who are new to this channel, we also created a student repository with these methods. So we have the add students, update students detailed, delete, get all students and get student by, by an ID. Then we have the implementation service for that, uh, for that uh, interface. So you can see this the service implementing our iStudent repository. We are using the HTTP client. Then we are able to add students calling the API student add student uh, endpoint. So uh, get all students calling this endpoint. And where is this endpoint? We have our endpoint on our controllers and our students uh, management. So we have this controller that does all the logics for our students. So that is just a quick recap. Then we have our app settings that links to our database. So we have this database called Students uh, Blazor app. Then these are our connection settings. These are server name. So if you are using uh, a server, you can provide an IP to that server with the port so that you can connect to the database. Then on our program.cs file, the only thing that we added is our students uh, repository and we also added our http client uh, connection to the our api so the next thing that i want us to do now is to add some tables 
So on our shared library, I want us to add, so we are using what we call code first approach to actually create our tables in, to our database. So I want us to add a, a class for, I want us to add a class for country. So we are calling this country. So on our country, so this is a public. So let me just zoom this so that you are able to see. Then here I want us to define our primary key. So our primary key is uh, ID. You can actually do this, but uh, Entity Framework Core will be able to uh, know that this is actually a primary key. So the next thing is I want us to define uh, the country code. Then I want us to also define, uh, so this is a string. I want us to define the country name. So we'll just do the name. Uh, I, think, I think that is it for the country. I want us also to add something. Uh, what, another thing that you can add to our, I want us to add something called uh, uh, system code. So on our system code, I want us to do public. So this is where we'll be storing all our system codes and these will be, will be defining, for example, the gender, the marital status, instead of having each of the tables for all those option types, you just create one table that will be storing all these uh, options. And how do we do that? I'm going to show you how we can be able to have that without duplicating and having uh, tables for each of the options. For example, the gender, uh, the gender, for example, the the marital status and all those uh, details. So what are, uh, we are going to do is to create uh, just one table that will uh, give us all these uh, options. Then we'll be able to reference them. So I'm going to create a string. Then I'll call this code. Then I can do here a string and I'll call these a uh, I'll call this a uh, description. So let me just call this description. Then uh, what other thing is, uh, so this one, I'm going to create another. So this, this table will all the parent system calls. For example, we'll create a system code called gender. So we'll have the code called gender. Then we'll say this is the system code representing genders. So these will be the parent. Then for the <clears throat> for the actual option types like the male and female, we are going to create a table called system code details. So I'm I'm using an I'm using a header detail kind of uh, approach system code detail. So this should be singular. So if I add this, I'll do here public. Then on my system code detail, I want to have my primary key, which will be my ID. So I'll just specify this as a key, but uh, EFCO can be able to know that. So then I'll have something called here. I'll have something called an int. I can represent now the foreign key. Then I'll say system code ID. So system code ID will be linked to this system code. So on my system code to specify that this is a foreign key, what I need to do is I represent here with our model system code. The ID should be the primary key from the system code table. So, so I'll just do that. So this is system code. So our application will know that this is a foreign key. Then I'm going to also do, I now want to capture the code. For example, the male and female, I can capture the code of the system code and I can also capture, I can also capture the description. So I'll just do description. Description. 
description the description so the next thing is assuming i want to order the option types for example gender male and female i want male to always start when on our drop down list so what i can do i can always give an order numbers when adding so i'll just make that nullable you can order or not then i can say order number so this order number if i stay one two three i can order always by this so each of the option type will have an order number so you can order based on how you want them to appear so that is it for for these uh, tables so we now have our system code then you have our system code detail so what i want us to do now how do we effect these changes to our database so i want us to go to our program application db context which is under management students management then data then we have the application db context we only have the db set for students so you can see the model is student then the table is students so we can copy this and you can see on the top here references you're able to see all the sections where this table has been referenced so that is the good thing about this so you're able to know so you can see that so i can now add our table our first table is the country so this is our model then the our table name will be countries so that should you should actually know that so you can see now references as zero so we haven't used this uh, table anywhere so then I'm going to do a system, system, system code. So that is our model. Then our table name should be system codes. Then I'm also going to do another one for system code detail. Our table name should be system code details. So after I'm, I've done with this, so we have added these three tables. But when we go to our database, I just go to our database. This is the name of our database. If I refresh, you'll be able to see we don't have those tables here. We only have the students table. For us to effect those changes to the database, we are going to do to apply migrations. And to do that, come to tools, nugget package, nugget package manager, then console manager, package uh, manager console. Then I'm going to do add. So these are very important commands add migration then you give the name of the migration so we'll say system codes so if i press enter it will add a migration file to our to our application and where does our migration file resides so it resides under this folder under data then migrations so you can see it has uh, completed so if we got we will go to migrations folder here we'll see there's a file called systems codes and it has actually added a timestamp so if we click on it we'll see there is some sql commands that has been generated so you you can see we have two methods the up and the down so these two methods the first one you can be able to see it has the create table countries with these columns id code and the name and it actually gives us a constraint for the primary key which is the id then we have the another table system codes and the system code details it has also done the same for our system code details remember we added a foreign key for the system code id so this is a foreign key and you can see it has actually created a foreign key but if you go to our database you will see that these tables are not there so if we just refresh the tables are still not there so how do we ensure that these tables and it has also created our uh, index for easy retrieval of our records so to apply these changes to our database we need to add an we need to apply another command so we do update database so if we say update database click press enter so it will now apply these changes to our database and you can see 
it is actually running some commands here. So you can see these are some of the SQL statements. So if you now come to our database, we are able to see that those tables are there. You can see the students code details and the students and the system codes details, the system code details and the system codes and also countries. So if I select this table, I'll see the ID code and the name. For the system codes, I'll be able to see the ID, system code ID, which is a foreign key, the code description and the order number. Then we have the system codes. So these are the tables that we've just added. So once we, we are done with that, what we want to do is, if we come to our client project, then under pages, we can create a folder for countries. So I'll create a folder. Then I'll call these uh, countries. Then here I'll create a Reza component. Then I'll say this is a add country. So this is a Reza page for adding the country. So for this, I'll just give the title as add country. Then, because we had done something on add, so we've added our Reza component, Reza component here. So I want us to add some page, some layouts and even the entry fields for adding a new page. The entry fields for adding a new country, sorry. So what I want us to do, uh, there is something we had done on students. So I'm going to copy that and add it here. So here I'm going to, let me just minimize this so that you're able to see. So for the country, I'm going to define some, I'm going to come here. Then I want us to, inside the code, we define our, we define our object. So this should be country. So this should be country. Then you say country object. So this should be country. So what I want us to do, I want us to copy this and we can, we can actually copy all of this. So at the top here, I want us to add uh, our reference, our reference to our services, our models. Then here we can say add, so this page, to get for this page, this is our URL, add country. So this should actually, so this should be country country so then our objects so our object should be so we can have these as the country then you can say this is add country then you can say on submit we want to have so let's just remove this before we do anything Then I want us to add, so for the object, we'll say code. So you can have the code. Say this is code. And this is, uh, you can say country, code. Then you can say this is code. Then another thing is I say country name. Say this is. Um, then here we'll say name. So here we also have name. So that is the only thing you are saving. So you can get rid of this. So you only have two entry fields, the country code and the name. So what we need here so what you need here is uh, we also want a cancel button. So let's 
get it from here so come here you can do cancel so that is solved then you can also add a button for create for create so you we'll call this create country then here we'll, we'll actually add what we'll, we'll, we'll add our implementation here so here we'll now say on validate submit you should create so we should call the create country method so we now have our object so these are page add country so we have the country code then the object country name then the name then we have the save so we'll call the save country then we have the back to list so let's add another p another other components to display the list of all the countries that we've just added so we'll say this is our countries countries so we'll say country sorry countries list so after we've done with that i'll just copy what we have here I just copy this for the list then I'll say this is a sorry so I'll just copy here so this is a I'll say this is a country's list so here for us to get the list of countries we need to define something here so I'll just copy this so, so we have all the lists so i'll just have the countries so this is a should be country model it will give us all the countries that we've just added so this is a collection then on initialize i want us to load all so we'll say all countries then it will actually load here then once it loads it needs to add so let's just comment this we'll we'll actually do something then we need to now have so i'll just comment also this one so i'll just comment it for now but i'll show you how we'll we'll, we'll enhance that so after you have done so these all countries will be now it will check if there is the data in our list then it will say loading countries so if there is list within our countries it will add the id then you can say country code then you can have the country name Sorry. country name then you can also edit we don't delete you can leave the delete button but i'll show you we should not be deleting countries in our database then you can now say so this should be country so we'll say for each i uh, will have the id then you can have the code then you can have the name so that is it then you can remove all the rest then you can have the country id and the country code then you can say there is no there is no countries list available so that is it so this page should be students list so this should be countries list now so this is the countries list so so we have the add country so for us to see the countries list we should actually load this page first 
So then after loading this list page, we have a button here. You can see we have a button for add new country. So it'll say this is add new country. Then it will now reference our add country page. So here we will give the redirection add country. Then when you add, click that, it will now open this page for adding a new country. So for us, let's now go to our navigation. So that is under components, then layout, menu layout. For us to see that, we need to add the link. So I'll copy the link for, this is the link for students. Then here, I'm going to say countries. Countries. Then for us to get the list of countries, we'll have this. So it should, the navigation link should be the countries list. So the countries list, where is the countries list? On our navigation layout under pages, the countries list, so this is the list that I'm talking about. So on our navigation, this is what you should reference. Then we'll have the countries. So if we just launch our app, we should be able to see these countries. And when we click it, it will take us to the list of countries and you can now add the list. But now we have not completed this section. We need to add the, we need to have our, to create our functions to add the countries. That is the repository for the countries and updating, deleting, and doing the rest. So if we just launch, you'll see we have the countries. So if I click countries, You'll see there is loading countries, then there is no countries list available because you have not added. So if I click add country, you'll see it has given us the add country code and the country name. But now this section will not do anything because when we come to add countries, we need to implement our add countries code. So how do we do that? The same way we did for the students. So we have the students uh, service and we need to implement our add students uh, repository. So our add student repository, if we come to service, you'll see we need to take a student's record and call an endpoint called uh, API students add students. So that one we need to have it under, under controllers for adding. So this is our endpoint for adding for adding students. So what we are going to do for this video, we are going to create our endpoint for adding countries. So I'm going to create a controller. Let me just stop our project. Stop this. So I'm going to add a controller, so which is an API controller using Entity Framework Core. Then I'm going to generate for our, I'm going to generate for our countries. So our country, so which is the model. So we are checking for the country model. So this is the country model. Then DB context, that is it. Then we are going to call this controller countries controller. So if I generate, it will generate my API and the endpoints for all the for all the for all these endpoints that I need for that controller. So let's see how it will work. So it's scaffolding. So there we go. So we have generated our API controller application db context so we have the get countries get country by an id then uh, put country so for updating post country and delete country then check if the country exists so for us here so you can see for the count for the students we were using the i student repository then you are actually are uh, now injecting all this so we'll be able to change that now, I want us to do something. So for our 
API under control countries, I want us to, to give it the name. So we'll say all countries. So this, if you call that, we'll be able to get all the countries. Then for the for the get student by an ID, so you can replace these here. Then you can say this is a single country. So that is a get still. Then I also want us for the post. So I'm going to copy that. Where is the post? So this is the post. So I'll say this is add country. Then another one is for the delete. So we're going to say delete country. So we'll say this delete country. Then which other one? Put. Put is for the update. So we are going to, that is post, but this should be put. We update a single student. So if you come here, I'll just say update country. Then I do that. So this will update a country. Which other one we've forgotten? So this is it. So I I like naming get all. So I'll say this is get all countries. Then get get single country by an ID. Then I'll say this is update single country. Then I can say this is add new country. Then I can say this is delete country. So that is our endpoint. So we've generated our endpoints for for updating, deleting, and so we can also do the same for the for the others. So I'll just do API. That is it. Then I can do for system codes. So I'll say system code application DB contact. Then I can generate that. So it will give me the endpoints. Then I can just decorate the way I want so that I'm able to get all the endpoints. So if you're new to this channel, consider subscribing, like our videos, comment down below for us to get to know what you need. So I'll just decorate my endpoints. So here I will just do this. So this is all system codes so get all so i'll say get all system codes then i can also do here a single system code then i'll say get single system code then here i'll also say update system code then here I'll say update single system code so that is my endpoints then here I'll also say so this is uh, add system code then this is I'll update this to add new system and new system code then delete i'll say delete system code so this is the delete then that is it for my endpoints so you can check that so let let's generate the last one controller api api controller with actions using efco then I'm going to now select our system code details and also generate. So you are scaffolding. So if you're new to this channel, consider subscribing, like the video, comment down below for us to know where we can improve. So I'll also do the same here. So this is all system 
code details so this will give us all system code details so i'll also do here single system code detail so get single i'll just do that then here say update system code detail so this is a uh, update system code detail then i'll do add so this will be add system code detail so this is add system code detail so i'll, I'll say uh, add new system code detail then delete so i'll say delete system code detail then i'll pass the id so we now have the endpoints to do everything that we need so we have our controller for countries to add countries for students to add students system code details to add system code details and system codes uh endpoints to add system codes so that is it for today's video so we are going to now consume these endpoints on our next video so if you are new to this channel consider subscribing like the video comment down below and see you in our next video bye and keep safe Thank you.